In the previous lecture, we defined Lensmaker's equation and we said we can use Lensmaker's equation to determine the focal length of our lens, knowing the index of refraction of that lens, as well as the radii of curvature. Now, let's actually derive the Lensmaker's equation using geometry, trigonometry, and Snell's law. So let's suppose we have the following double convex lens. So we have the front surface of our lens and the back surface of the lens. This line is the principal axis. Now point C2 is the center of curvature of the back surface of our lens and point C1 is the radi or is the center of curvature of the front surface of our lens. Now this point F is the focal point of our lens. Let's suppose we take a single ray of light that is parallel to the axis, when it hits the front surface it will refract, when it hits the back surface it will refract once again, and the final ray, the final refracted ray, will pass through the focal point because this ray was parallel to our axis. Now let's suppose this point is the point where ray hits our front surface and this line, this black dashed line is the normal line to the surface at this point. Let's call that normal line 1. And likewise, let's suppose this point represents the point where this inner ray refracts and bends. And so this line, let's call it normal line 2, is the line that is normal to the back surface of our lens at this particular point. Now, there are a lot of different angles involved in the following derivation. So let's name all these angles. So this angle is theta 1. It's the angle between our ray of light and the normal line 1. Now, let's suppose this is our ray of light if we continue drawing our straight line as shown by the following dashed line. This ray will actually refract, it will bend, and the angle between this black dashed line that is straight, that runs along this ray, and the bended ray is theta 7. So this angle is theta 7. Now the angle between our normal line and our refracted ray is theta 2. Now, notice by the symmetry of the situation, because the ray is parallel to the axis and this is a straight line, theta 1 is equal to this angle theta 1. Now, Theta 3 is given by this angle. Theta 3 is the angle between normal line 2 and the ray that passes inside our lens. Now, theta 4 is given by the following angle. Theta 4 is the angle between the normal line and this final refracted ray. Angle 5 is given to be the angle between the axis and the normal line 2. And angle 6 is equal to the angle between the axis and this final refracted ray. So let's suppose that outside the lens we have air and the index of refraction of air is equal to N1 and that is equal to 1. Now N2 represents the index of refraction of our lens. Now, although the size of the double convex lens in this diagram is exaggerated so that the, angle, the angles are more clear, we're making the assumption that our lens is a very thin lens. And by making the assumption that the lens is a very thin lens, we can approximate our angle to be approximately equal to sine of that angle, which is also approximately equal to tangent of that angle, where angle is given in radians and not degrees. Now finally, let's also define the following two important parameters. So, the distance from this point where the ray hits the front surface to this axis is given by H1. And the distance from this point where the inner ray hits the outer uh, region of our lens to this point to the axis, 
this vertical distance is given by h2. So now let's begin our derivation and let's begin by recalling Snell's law. So recall that Snell's law essentially gives us a relationship between the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, and the indices of refraction for each one of our two mediums. So let's begin with the following ray. So this ray hits the surface and refracts. So we're going to use Snell's law to build a relationship between theta 1 and theta 2. So n1 multiplied by sine of theta 1 is equal to n2 multiplied by sine of theta 2. So theta 2 is the angle of refraction and theta 1 is the angle of incidence. n1 is the index of refraction of air and n2 is the index of refraction of our lens. Now, Let's make the assumption that n1 is equal to 1, so this cancels out. Now let's suppose n2 is equal to n, so we replace our n2 with n to simplify our parameter. Now because of this assumption, because we're assuming we're dealing with a very thin lens, sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. So that means this becomes as follows. So n1 disappears, sine of theta 1 is replaced with theta 1, and sine of theta 2 is replaced with theta theta 2 and n2 is replaced with n. So theta 1 is equal to n multiplied by theta 2. Now let's also uh, use Snell's law for this ray. So let's suppose we're going from the outside to the inside. So angle theta 4 is our, uh, our angle of incidence and this angle theta 3 is the angle of refraction. So n1 multiplied by sine of theta 1 is equal to n2 multiplied by sine of theta 2. Now once again n1 is equal to 1 so this becomes 1 sine of theta 4 is approximately equal to theta 4 sine of theta 3 is approximately equal to theta 3 and n2 is replaced with n. So we have the following two important relationships that we obtain by using Snell's law and making this assumption so this will become important in step four now let's move on to step two in our derivation and now let's use this approximation as well as trig function so we're using the sine and tangent trig function so sine of theta 1 is equal to h1 divided by r1. So we're essentially examining a rectangle. So let's suppose this h1 is the height of our rectangle, this distance is the hypotenuse of our rectangle, and this is the base of our rectangle. Now what exactly is the length of the base? Well it's the point from this location to c1. And because we're assuming we have a very thin lens, the distance, this distance simply represents our radius of curvature R1. So sine of theta 1, this angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And this distance represents our hypotenuse. So sine of theta 1 is equal to h1, where h1 is this distance, and r1 is the distance from point c1 to the front face of our lens. Now this is approximately equal to theta 1, because we're making the following assumption. So, R1 is the radius of curvature of the front surface. Now, let's apply the same exact result for this triangle. So, we have this triangle where the height of the triangle is H2 and the hypotenuse of the triangle is R2, where R2 is the radius of curvature of the back surface of our lens. So sine of theta 5 is equal to h2 divided by r2, where this is approximately equal to theta 5 by this approximation. And finally, we use tangent, so we're using this triangle. So we know this is our hypotenuse, this is our uh, length of the base, and this is our height. 
So once again, we're using tangent function. So tangent of this angle is equal to opposite divided by our base. Now this base is approximately equal to the focal length f. So tangent of theta 6 is equal to h2, the height, divided by the focal. Now what exactly is this? Well from this assumption we see that this is approximately equal to simply the angle theta 6. So these three equations will become important in just a moment in step four. Now finally, let's move on to step three before we combine our results. So in step three, we're essentially using a bit of geometry. So if we examine this diagram, we get the following three relationships. So we have angle theta seven is equal to theta one minus theta two. Angle theta four is equal to angle theta five plus theta 6 and theta 5 is equal to theta 3 minus theta 7. Now let's move on to step 4 in which we're going to combine these results to essentially derive Lensmaker's equation. So let's begin with the following equation. From this last equation in step 3, theta 5 is equal to theta 3 minus theta 7. Now what exactly is theta 3? Let's go back to this equation. From this equation we see theta 3 is equal to theta 4 divided by n. So that's exactly what we plug in for theta 3. What about theta 7? Theta 7 from this equation is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2. That's exactly what we plug in into this equation. Now let's actually distribute our negative so this becomes negative this becomes positive what exactly is theta 4 well from this equation theta 4 is equal to theta 5 plus theta 6 let's replace theta 4 with with theta 5 plus theta 6 and let's actually distribute this end to both of these terms so that's exactly what we do in this step so theta 5 is equal to theta 5 divided by n plus theta 6 divided by n minus theta 1 plus well now we want to represent theta 2 in terms of theta 1 so in this equation we see that theta 2 is equal to theta 1 divided by n and that's exactly what we do in this step now let's go back to this uh, step step 2 from, st from step 2 we see that theta 5 is equal to h2 divided by r2 so we can replace theta 5 with h2 divided by r2 so this becomes h2 divided by r2 is equal to h2 divided by r2 multiplied by n plus what about theta 6? Well theta 6 from this relationship is equal to h2 divided by f and that's exactly what we replace theta 6 with. What about theta 1? From this relationship theta 1 is equal to h1 divided by r1 so this becomes h1 divided by r1 and this becomes h1 divided by n multiplied by r1. Now what is the relationship between H1 and H2? Now in this diagram, because of the exaggeration and size of our lens, these two quantities do not look like they're equal. However, if the lens is very thin, H1 is approximately equal to H2. So if H1 is approximately equal to H2, these quantities are the same, so we can divide both sides by h and these will cancel out. Now let's also multiply both sides by n. We get the following result. So the n here cancels, the n here cancels, and the n here will cancel. So n divided by r2 is equal to 1 divided by r2 plus 1 divided by f minus n divided by r1 plus 1 divided by r1. Now if we rearrange our equation, we now obtain Lensmaker's equation. We see that 1 divided by the focal length is equal to n minus 1 multiplied by 1 divided by r1 plus 1 divided by r2, where n is 
the index of refraction of the lens, f is the focal length of the lens, r1 and r2 are the radii of curvature of our lens. Now r1 and r2 are positive as long as our lens is convex. However, if our lens is concave, that means our radius of curvature will be negative.